Here. 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 Uh, before we get to the visitors, I'm going to turn the meeting over to Mayor Cohen. Good evening. We're presenting a proclamation to PJ from PJ's Catering this evening as this is her 40th year in catering and her actual anniversary date is November 18th, so you all have time to stop in that day. <laughs> when PJ was growing up, she knew that she did not have any desire to attend college. So after much discussion with her parents, they finally agreed to let her open up a business, which she did in Scott Township on Vanadium Road. She found a storefront, and while her father was remodeling, the place. Her mother taught her how to bake her pastries, cookies, and cakes from the family recipes. Her mother worked with her in Bridgeville, and her mother had a stool facing the front door of the register, and she could also have a full view of what was happening in the kitchen, and the crew began to call that the Crow's Nest. We're honored to have her here this evening because she has done so much for the community. When Ivan came, she was out delivering meals, and currently, when we had that flood, she also was out delivering meals to those that were in need. And she always has the Veterans Day when she gives complimentary <coughs> meals to all of our veterans. So, whereas upon graduation, Pam was determined to start her own business in the food industry, with the help of her father building cabinets and remodeling the storefront, her mother and grandmother played a part in the kitchen creating delicious homemade meals. Thus, the business PJ's came into being. In, 1990, in 1988, after 10 years in Scott Township, she had been so successful, she relocated and brought the building at 700 Bower Hill Road in Bridgeville, and history has been made. Whereas Pam is a very personable lady, and her mother, Joan, worked with her for 37 years, she has never had to advertise for business because it always freely came to her. In 2004, when the storm Ivan flooded the surrounding area, many families and homes were devastated with their losses, and that's when Pam loaded up her vehicle and took the food to the fire halls and to other homes, to residents on the street that lost almost everything, and she handed them free meals and soups to all of them. This has been going on for years. Ever since that devastating day, PJ's Deli has been serving the community in generosity, and we are so proud that she is still with us. Pam has a significant impact on dedicating her time and efforts to all her clients and culinary skills. Therefore, in order, order to honor and commend Pam Wheat for her many achievements and longevity, I proclaim November 18th as the 40th anniversary day for PJ's Deli in the borough of Bridgeville. Stadium, but miniature play players, the Steelers versus the New York Jets. And if you want to see the videos, they can be found on YouTube at Pam J's 100. Thank you. God bless Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, our first visitor, uh, 
Mr. Blasio. Thank you. The bus shelters. Uh, I understand that the contract is up for renewal. There is a shelter at the intersection of Silva and Bower Hill. And for many years, the residents of uh, Pasavento, uh, that area, have mentioned that the shelter obstructs their view as they're departing Silva onto Bower Hill Road. While the lines of sight are within the acceptable standards, and frankly, if you move up and you are careful, you can see, you know, to make a left turn, or for that matter, a right turn on Bower Hill. With the amount of traffic that is present, it may be beneficial for the community to, as we're renewing the contract, ask that this shelter be moved or removed. Um, while there is use for this shelter, and I would hope that it could stay, uh, its location uh, is, uh, makes it difficult uh, for our residents. So again, just moving it um, further away from the intersection might be of some assistance. And that, uh, I hope all will have a happy holidays and a Merry Christmas and light up night on December 7th, otherwise known as Winter Blast. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman recognizes Mary Weiss. Uh, very short, very sweet. I did it again. I just want to ask Council, please, to remind PennDOT that at least one resident in Bridgeville still would like to see a major highway from out there in Upper St. Clair across through part of South Fayette onto I-79, and if they ever finish 43, 43. And that's all I'm asking of you tonight. Thank you. And I'll talk to you later about something else. Thank Thanks. you, Mary. Uh, Dennis Horry. <laughs> If you guys aren't sick of hearing everything about uh, Tropical Storm Lori, <laughs> my name is Lori. She got a for everything. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to thank everybody again. And I got a little donation for the Public Works and the Fire Department for all their help. I guess Lori can take care of the Public Works. And Bill, you can take care of this, I guess. Thank you very much. Good. All right. Thank you, Dennis. Very Thank nice you. Uh, That's right. Thank you. Uh, excuse me. Um, every month for about two years, I come to this meeting and heard Mary Wise, a charming, lovable lady, <coughs> talk, talk, talk about the, her solution to the traffic congestion problem, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, unfortunately, uh, what Mary has never told the public is what caused the traffic congestion, which was primarily uh, an attitude or an official policy of borough, members of borough council going back many years. And it involved uh, borough council turning down seven different sol recommended solutions from seven different traffic engineers on how to solve the quarter problem. <clears throat> it turned down two offers by uh, PennDOT to help out. But because none, none of the details will ever be in any, uh, any newspaper, I just want to make it clear how simple, relatively simple, the solution to the traffic congestion problem is. This obviously is Bridgeville. These are the, Bridgeville was here 100 years before any of the other communities around here. All the, lead, all the roads lead to Bridgeville. This is Washington Pike, it's north Washington Pike, south. Uh, despite this network of uh, seven, uh, probably uh, uh, 20, 
25 to 30,000 vehicles. <coughs> the section of road in Bridgeville is only two lanes wide. With, with Penlock, no, oh, sorry, with all of those traffic engineers, you get, actually, they started 1969. It's through the Allegheny County Panhandle Commission recommended that Bridgeville just make Shady Avenue 220 yards longer so that Shady Avenue would become, <coughs> excuse me, a three-lane wide, one-way street heading south, <clears throat> which would relieve Washington Avenue, uh, a three-lane road going north. And in, this, in a sense, it would make this, this section four lanes wide. This section could be, it would, it would be up to someone else. I'll always be being interested in city planning and the, uh, the, <coughs> and the condition of the lifestyle of people in Bridgeville. I'm really, I wasn't too concerned about vehicles getting past the two shopping centers in Collier to Bridgeville because I doubt if very many of them would shop here. But I, I would like to point out that, excuse me, that the traffic flow from Bethel Park and Upper St. Clair all would tie in very nicely to that system. And that incidentally, I might mention this to you if you get a chance. Uh, there, I heard uh, the, the rumors about the two-way couple over the years became outrageous. Uh, all, all of the people on Shady Avenue were notified that their homes would be taken down, and none of them would be touched. Uh, excuse me. The, uh, the people on this uh, this dotted green area here is the defined central business district of Bridgeville right now. Most of the people on Shady Avenue don't realize but their homes are all in the central business district. If such, if this plan would occur, simply by double or quadrupling the number of cars going past the properties they own, would at least double the value of the property if they ever decided to sell. That includes the uh, American Legion too. Excuse me. Uh, these are, uh, to give you an idea of what a three-lane uh, Shady Avenue would look like, to get a chance to take a look at them. That would, that would have done 40 years ago, and can still be done, it would have doubled the size of the business district, doubled the tax revenue income. There would be the possibility of, of erecting 10-story high-rise apartments, which many communities have done across the country, because what that does is that established, that brings uh, uh, thousands or hundreds and thousands of residents right into the center of your business district who walk to your stores and don't get in the corner and go to a shopping center. I'm mentioning that because it bring, because of your uh, uh, moving towards some sort of solution about the how to solve the Baldwin Street traffic congestion problem, I'm totally opposed to That's not about traffic. Yeah. You know, it is about traffic. No, no, you're saying that that plan is there to solve the Baldwin Street <coughs> traffic congestion problem. And that is not what that project's about. Well, my point is... No, I'm, I'm just saying that's what you're okay, saying. Okay, no, no, what I'm saying is the proposal that I've made does involve getting four lanes of track. Right now, the proposal being made by the consultant, I'm sure, they, I'm sure a very capable person, but her plan doesn't apply to Bridgeville. Bridgeville the people in Bridgeville, number one, can't afford it. Number two, the people in Bridgeville, as I mentioned to you at the last meeting, have an average income of $55,000 a year. The, the data that I've gotten from the Carnegie Library within the past two weeks, 50% the people in the average family in Bridgeville is paying 50% more taxes to the community than the people in the communities around us. It's, it's ridiculous. And what the present with the proposal that you're considering for Baldwin Street will do is it will wipe out a potentially what is potentially the best uh, business district in Bridgeville. It's the only level one. It's the, and incidentally, the, uh, the, this, is, this is the overall plan. This is just the drawing that you've seen several times about what it could look like. The, uh, the 1980 Department of Environmental Protection uh, Plan, by the way, doesn't even mention what you're doing. It simply says the, the, the cause of the original flooding problem is 
a crick channel isn't wide enough and isn't deep enough, as well as the five bridges. I know you guys have, have gotten, you, you've seen the small opening of the bridges as being a cause, but uh, uh, t tell me something. The last time I was here, I asked you if you were going to adopt the precise plan that Carol proposed to you guys. And I noticed tonight on your agenda, you have a motion, or you're entertaining a motion to pass that on. I want to know if you've no, made no, a decision. Not good. Not good. Not good. Not good. Not good. Good. I'm, I'm glad. I, I, I well, where did you see it? I, I misread it. I thought I read it on here tonight. No, that's fine. My, uh, my point is, uh, the, to, uh, my point is, modify the plan greatly. It's just up the I want to ask you something else. Have you guys heard anything from, have you, have you presented your proposal to DEP and the Army Corps of Engineers yet? And what about the guys from the University of Pittsburgh who are doing a study? Mm -hmm. Students. Students. Yeah. Students. 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 It's a student. I, mean, I didn't hear it. It's a student. Assignment. Doing an assignment. So, no, it's, it's five students who've done a study, and from what I was told... Well, what he told me was, it's his assignment. Well... And he's, and, he's been, and he's been in contact with me. And they have been with him, accompanying him, so... Good, I understand. Tell me, Lori, did they tell you... I heard last week that they have built a model of the watershed area in uh, Upper St. Clair, Buffalo Park, and part of Bridgeville. It's causing the Bridgeville. Problem? Have you, have you, they addressed? Have you know anything they about that? They haven't communicated anything to us at this time. Okay. Well, my point is, I just want to caution you that uh, I, I'm not, I'm not going to stand by and allow you to do something that would so drastically uh, mess up the uh, basic economy of the community. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Wait, can I just confirm? Sure. That the, the study he's referring to was for flood control, not for traffic. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Well, well, let me respond to that. No, that, no, that, no, no that's, that's, that's I was verifying, I was talking to him. Yeah, we're, that's no, no, fine. No, no, the only thing I would let me respond to that. Uh, I wasn't my, asking my, you my, anything, Bob. I, I don't care you said you were asking. done. Excuse me, I want to make another statement. My plan, my plan differs from the one that you're looking at because I have four columns of traffic moving east and west of Washington Pike. The consultants only has two. That's an enormous difference. Uh, Council recognizes uh, Ray Airholz. stop signs at the intersection of uh, Linfield and Lafayette. They are working. Uh, they're, we've been monitoring the traffic at peak times. I'd say probably about 95% successful. The other 5% between a rolling stop. We're not quite stopping completely yet, but that's I mean, it's a matter of time. But the flashes on there definitely help. During the peak times, I'd say we've seen a backup of about six cars going from Winfield onto Bank Street but they roll through as far as between stop signs, both stop signs at the intersection of <coughs> Lafayette and on Bank Street with no backup onto Chartier Street. So I would say that the stop signs are working and traffic is slowing down. So also another side I'd like to thank the, the public works as far as their work as far as the lead pickup and the brush do an excellent job around the city of Bridge. So I'll comment on that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And our last speaker, uh, John Duncan. Yeah, John Duncan, Warner Street. Uh, I just wondered if there was anything with a hillside or anything coming up. We actually are over looking at it. Yeah, I saw a barrel there and a big, big barrel out, a big barrel. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if there was anything. We'll, we'll, we'll talk to you offline about that, Mr. Johnson, okay? We'll talk to you offline about this. Okay. And I just have one other thing. Do we still have a street sweeper? It's, um, it's done now. It, uh, it, the the uh, leaf pickup and uh, brush grinder 
um, program is going on now. The leaf pickup follows the street sweeper schedule. Okay. And uh, the brush grinder also. Are we still on the schedule? For, I mean, James Street and Warner, I haven't seen it for years. But the street sweeper. It, no, should, no. it should be. Um, James and Warner are part of the, um, he comes out at 4 o'clock in the morning to do um, Midtown, and he comes over that way too. That, so that's probably why you haven't seen it. Okay. He starts at 4 a.m. for that area. Okay, yeah, particularly in front of that dumpster there, it really gets to be a big mess right on the bed, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. okay. All right, thanks. Thank you, John. All right, uh, John, regular meeting. Excuse uh, me. Yes, sir. Uh, I didn't know I was going to have something to say when I came in. Okay. I just want to, I, uh, my name's Jim Shady, I live on Baldwin Street, and I just want to say about Pam, that's, that's why I didn't know this was going on. Uh, my sister, who lives in Arizona, appreciated what Pam was doing for us. And she called her to send her some money, but Pam refused it, saying uh, this was all on her. She didn't want to do that. She didn't want to take any money back. And uh, the other thing is that I want to thank the people at the Methodist Church for what they did in the aftermath. Sure. Thank you very much. All right. Um, Minutes. Uh, motion to the Borough Council regarding the minutes of the October 8, 2018 regular, meet, regular meeting as submitted. So moved. Bruce? Second. And Bill Anderson. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, current estimate number one, Baller Street backflow preventer contract. The motion to the Borough Council regarding the remittal of current estimate number one, Baller Street backflow preventer contract to uh, Osiris, Osiris. Osiris, sorry about that, Enterprises in the amount of $47,207.88 for work completed to date. Uh, yes, and been reviewed and approved by Engineer Sites. So, I'll second. Dr. Uchi, Bill Henderson, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, garbage, re garbage recycling bids contract years 2019 to 2021 with option years 2022 to 2023. Uh, bids were advertised and publicly opened on Friday, October 12, 2018 at 10 a.m. in the council chambers for the garbage recycling bid. Contract years 2019 to 2021 with option years 2022 and 2023 with the following bid results. Uh, garbage Un unlimited each week, recycling unlimited each week, cost per household per year. Bear with me on this one, people. Uh, <laughs> Westmoreland Sanitary Landfill LLC, year one, $192.91, year two, $196.77, year three, $200.71, option year four, $204.72, option year five, $208.82. Waste management of PA, Year one, 210, 84 cents. Year two, 223. Year three, 217 and 32 cents. Option four, 223 and 80 cents. Option five, 232 and 80 cents. BFI waste services, uh, year one, 205 and 68 cents. Year two, 211 and 80 cents. Year three, 218 and 16 cents. Option year four, 224 and 76 cents. Option year five, 231 and 48 cents. And Valley Waste Services Incorporated. Uh, year one, $219 and 24 cents. Year two, $225 and 84 cents. Year three, $232 and 68 cents. Option year four, $239.76 and option year five, $246.96. Now, uh, and then uh, for the e-waste, for um, e-waste and the uh, household uh, waste contractor, uh, Westmoreland Sanitary Landfill, year one, $210.91, year two, $215.13, year three, $219.44, option year four, $223.82, option year five, $228.30. Waste management of PA, 
Year one, 217 and 80 Year two, 219 dollars and 96 cents. Year three, 224 and 40 cents. Option year four, 223 and 12 cents. And option year five, 240 dollars and 36 cents. VFI Waste Services, year one, 220 dollars and 68 cents. Year two, uh, $227.40, year three, $234.36, year option year four, $232.16, option year four, $250.08. And, and Valley Waste Services Incorporated, uh, $233.04, $233 year two, $239.64, year three, $246.48, Option year four, two hundred fifty-three dollars and fifty-six cents, and option year five, two hundred sixty and seventy-six cents. What? Can I ask a question before you make a motion? Sure. So, are we first deciding if we're going to do the e-waste program? Um. Yes, you should decide whether you're going to do the garbage and recycling unlimited each week or the garbage and recycling unlimited each week and the household waste and e-waste program. Um, and accept that and then decide whether you're going to take um, to take option four and option five. Um, just as a comment, um, as far as the e-waste, it's going to save us $37,000 at least. Almost 38. Yeah, almost 38. Is it worth considering not having that as part of the contract with down the road, having, you know, um, possibly a, a spring and a fall or, or some type of collection. Where collection on a Saturday. To, it'll cost us money, but it won't cost us $38,000. Right. So that can be a way that we can save money. Right. Is something and pass to that consider. on to the residents right. because these costs are passed on to right. the residents. <coughs> Absolutely. So I want to bring that up before you brought yeah, it up. Sorry. That said, Mike, I'd, I'd make a motion to accept <laughs> the low bidder for uh, without the recycling. And I would like to make the motion to accept year four and five based on the pricing. It seems like it'll be about efficient to us. Okay, he said. Yes. I'm Let's sorry. get one motion at a time. I so, I so, I mean, I uh, second your motion. Okay. Uh, all those, that was Bill and Nina. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries for Westmoreland Sanitary Landfill without the e waste and the home, uh, household waste. And now, yeah, we have the other motion. So, motion for so I make a motion to to accept year four and five on the contract just based on pricing. I'll second that. All right. Uh, Joe Ricci and Chris Dalagucci for the option years. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, labor, labor agreement, full-time police officers in the, in the borough of Bridgeville. A motion to borough council regarding the labor agreement between the full-time Bridgeville uh, borough police officers and the borough of Bridgeville for the calendar year 2019, 2020, 2021. Uh, agreement includes the following. Three-year contract, wage increase uh, 2.5, 2.5 and 2.5 percent. Uh, deletion of paragraph 7 under Article 11 retirement, continuing expir expiration of a drop pension. Uh, um, Article 21, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 21. Um, my Super Bowl numbers here. <laughs> uh, payroll deductions, verbiage change due to the legality of the Fair Share Act. Uh, Article 24. Four, substance abuse policy, final uh, policy, final agreement, year extended, and Article 14, insurance, UPMC added to the choice of medical insurance. 
So moved. Um, Bill Anderson? Second. Oh, and uh, Joe Klassen. All those in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. All those opposed? Motion carries. I just want to thank um, our Public Safety Committee uh, and our Police Department um, for working together. Uh, this is always a, a long process um, to get through. And um, thank, thank you on both sides of the, of the table there. So thank you very much. Uh, proposed ordinance number 1003, uh, motion to the Borough Council regarding proposed ordinance 1003, an ordinance amending the Borough Glidual Stormwater Management Ordinance number 939, an ordinance that establishes stormwater management standards, site plan requirements, operation and maintenance responsibilities, prohibits certain activities, and provides a certain exemption, enforcement fees, expenses, and penalties for violation thereof. Uh, Allegheny kind of requires the ordinance to be in effect by De December 1st, 2018. The ordinance has been fully advertised. Has so moved. Uh, Nina Petricelli? I'll second. And Bill Anderson? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Proposed ordinance number 1004, motion to the borough council regarding proposed ordinance 1004, an ordinance adjusting the member's contribution to the police pension fund. Uh, per the actual recommendation conducted in October 2018, police pension contribution shall be lowered from 7% to 2.5 for the month of November and December 2018. As of January 1, 2019, member contributions shall be raised to be maximum permitted, maximum permitted by Act 608%. A re review of the fund will be conducted in September 19th regarding additional adjustments to the contribution. The ordinance has been fully advertised. So moved. Uh, Mr. Calarucci? Second. Mr. Mr. all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Uh, Lamar Bus Shelter Agreement. A uh, motion of the Borough Council regarding an updated agreement between Lamar Advertising of Pittsburgh and Bridgeville Borough. Um, the agreement has been updated to remove one shelter on Dewey Avenue that has zero usage and a $500 per shelter per year annual cash guarantee, years 1 through 10. The expiring contract includes included seven shelters at $750. Lamar proposes six shelters at $500 per year due to a decrease in advertising sales of the shelters per Section 12 of the agreement. Uh, Solicitor McDermott has reviewed the document. Is there a motion? Yeah. Uh, so moved. Uh, Nina? I'll move it. And Joe Bucci, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, current estimate number three, 2018 Sanitary Soil Repair Contract A. A motion to bur Borough Council regarding the remittal of current estimate number three, 2018 Sanitary Soil Contract A to Neando Construction in the amount of $43,059.51 for the work completed today. Uh, engineer site is reviewing the submittals and will provide that to you. Nina and Bruce Garucci, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, calendar year 2019 budget workshop meeting advertisement. A motion of the Borough Council approving the advertisement of the budget workshop meeting to be held on Tuesday, uh, November 20th, 2018 at 6 p.m. in the Council Chambers. I'll move. Uh, Joe Garucci. Sure. And Bruce, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, calendar year 2019 proposed budget advertisement. Uh, motion of the Borough Council approving the advertisement of the calendar year 2019 proposed budget to be available for public inspection on Monday, November 26, 2018. Uh, this advertisement will, be, will meet and exceed the 10 day public review requirement per the borough code. I'll move. Who is that? Joe. Joe. And Bruce, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, bill list, uh, motion of the borough council regarding the November 2018 bill list. I'll move. Second. Joe and uh, Bill, uh, Joe Kloss, 
on the earlier. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Payroll motion, Borough Council approving the payrolls of November 16, 23, 30, and December 7, 2018. So moved. Uh, Bruce Galducci? Second. And Andy Chelli, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, monthly reports. Um, a motion to accept and pay any commissions due to the October 2018 real estate tax collector report. So uh, Bruce. I'll second. And Joe uh, Rucci, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept the September 2018 financial report. I'll move. Uh, Bill Anderson? No, Joe. Oh, that was Joe. I'm sorry. I'll second. And Bill Anderson. There you go. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept the October 2018 police report. So moved. Bill Anderson? Second. And Joe Busmo, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, real estate tax refund. A motion to a, a motion of the borough council regarding the following real estate tax refund due to change in the assessment as requested by the real estate tax collector in the year 2018, block block 322-C-51, the amount of $218.23 to Vince Carr. Um, all those in favor? Or is there a motion? So moved. All those in favor. All right. I'll second it. Just just the the all those in favor? Uh, all right. All those in favor? Motion carries. <sighs> Committee reports. Administration. No reports. Uh, Brian, Joe. Uh, we're proud to say that uh, by the donations from the community, what was the final amount? Approximately, Corey, it's like eighty thousand. Uh -huh. It was around eighty thousand dollars that was donated by the community to that relief fund. Uh, we have sent all checks out to the different uh, uh, people to uh, in the amount. And I'm sorry, I don't have it. Right four fifty-four. Four hundred and fifty-four dollars and sixty-four cents per unit, which I thought was. We, we didn't even think we'd get anywhere that close. So uh, that uh, is really uh, a very big thing, I think, in the community that they got around it and, and was uh, very proud to, to, to help, uh, help the people that, that uh, went through that uh, issue. Um, yeah, yeah, thank you to all, all the people that, that helped in that cause. Uh, as uh, Mike went through, we're having a finance uh, um, a workshop on November 20th. And uh, for the finance committee, I'd like to have a, a meeting uh, next week to just go over that uh, one last time. Uh, the numbers this, week this week. I'm sorry, this week, excuse me, thank you. Uh, this week to, to go over those numbers one more time uh, prior to that meeting. That's all I have. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Parks and Rec. Uh, thanks, Mr. President. <clears throat> As of today, the parks are still open, the water is on. But we're in the process of having the water shut off in the parks due to the oncoming winter weather. Uh, folks get some nice days. The best bet would be to look to Cook School Park. The facilities will be closed, but it, it's easy to get into as opposed to charters and uh, McLaughlin, which is going to be pretty much closed down. Uh, over the winter, construction will be uh, started and completed on the restroom down in the Chartier's Park. Uh, we're going through paperwork with the county. They have to have a construction meeting with the contractor and our Mr. Sites has to meet with them and get things rolling. So the work should be completed through the winter and then uh, we'll check on, make sure there's no leaks in the spring. And that should be good to go. And not related to parks, but I'd like to thank the fire department and employees at the borough for the uh, Halloween parade we had. The weather was terrible, but we had a relatively decent turnout. We seemed to have a good time. Hopefully the sun will shine next year. But fire department and Cheryl and the girls, they do a good job on that every year. So I appreciate it, Brian. That's all I have. Thanks, Joe. Uh, public Works. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just to echo my friend Joe over here, 
I have in my note here that what we put winterize the parts, so I guess they are very close to be close. <laughs> so, um, really, the, the rest of the item, they are regular maintenance to the bar, such as uh, winterize things. To get ready for the snow, we are very ready. I hope it never comes. Up to uh, 12 inch, we can add that to that. We try not to, who knows? Nobody knows. But we are prepared. We have enough salt. Uh, thanks to Lori. The, she's, it's funny, she wore salt in July, just so we have. Uh, I have to thank Public Court for the nice job they did to the uh, Christmas light at the park. I thought the park looks beautiful, as usual. And it's a land, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Nina. Uh, public safety, Bill? Uh, just a couple of things, Mike. We, um, we're going to continue to monitor uh, Winfield and Lafayette up there with those uh, temporary stop signs and appreciate working with Ray and the residents up there to address their concerns. Um, we're getting feedback from not only the residents up there but, but other folks that experience that and, and we're monitoring the, the traffic backups. Also, again, uh, my thanks to Sergeant James and the rest of the police department for professional negotiation that's always tough. Um, we're proud of our police department. Uh, we try to remain fiscally responsible and, and at the same time um, make sure that we're, we're taking care of our, our folks that keep us safe. So thank you again. Thanks, Bill. Uh, Madam Mayor. Mm -hmm. well, happy Veterans Day to all the veterans of our community. And on Friday I was invited to CentOS Corporation for their celebration, OSHA presented them with an award for their voluntary protection program. And they presented me with a book, which is very interesting on how the company came about. And as soon as I'm finished reading it, I intend to turn it over to the Historical Society. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Sergeant James, you have anything? I have not. No, he had nothing. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yeah, I got none to my report. Gotcha. Uh, Engineer Sites. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, you have another report. Unless you have any questions, we'll move on with the Green Line Go, which was not part of that report. Uh, we opened bids on uh, Friday morning for the adaptive signal upgrades. Uh, the borough had received a grant uh, in the amount of $248,602.50 for construction costs. The bids that were received were over that amount. They, we had three bids with a low bid of you know, $346,717.23. The three intersections in which uh, the adaptive signal upgrades were to occur were Washington Avenue and Station Street, Washington Avenue and Bower Hill Road, and Washington Avenue Presley Road. In reviewing the uh, scope of work with my traffic engineers, uh, we felt that it would be good to uh, eliminate the Washington Avenue and Presley Road intersection from the scope of work and since that intersection is already interconnected with the traffic signals at the entrance to uh, Shark Tears Valley Shopping Center across from Anderson Equipment. <coughs> so therefore we're asking for a motion to be made to award the Green Light Go Adaptive Traffic Signal Project to uh, Broadner Technical Services in the amount of 238000 $739.46 and complete a green light go grant for <coughs> the next cycle which will be due January 11th, 2019 to secure funds for the intersection of Washington Avenue and Presley Road. Need that in the form of a motion? We need that in the form of a motion. Yes, we need a motion. Uh, so second. Yes. Uh, so Anderson and Nina. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Of course. Yes. All the pets? Good. Anything else, Joe? No. Thank, Thank you very much. Uh, RG, we'll chill it Thanks, Mr. President. Just uh, a couple minor things. I like to, in our newsletter we have put out, I like to just reiterate it here. Uh, thank you to a lot of the residents that have upgraded their house numbers on their houses by reading the letter. It's been a big help for us, for the three of us sitting here. So, but there's still some out there that need it, and they'll come. 
you know. And then also we added a new thing this year is adopting a fire hydrant, especially come wintertime, shoveling it out. You know, so that's in there. And then during the summer, if you have trees around it or bushes, please expose it because we don't know where they are for where they're growing. Do you, so. you sending out letters or knocking on a door if their numbers aren't large enough? Just let them know. No, a lot of people have been doing it through the newsletter right now. But if you see one now, now that people are starting to address it, you because maybe got my numbers are bigger because, because of the ordinance. There is an ordinance. The ordinance states that if, if they replace it, they need to replace it up to four inches, but it doesn't state that they have to replace it. Yeah. We have a lot of that didn't have them. Right. And they're putting them on. So we're getting there. They should do for their own protection, really. That's well, exciting. I was just curious, like, I don't know if mine are large enough. I think they are, but I, I know think I have to I think four them. inches is the minimum. Is that three, three or four? The ordinance says four. Four. Four, four inches. inches. Yeah. yeah. I mean, times of the essence, I know we'll all say that. Night times the worst. We've got to put it where we can see them and don't make them match the house. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got for the third night. May I add something that may be useful? Sure. I know when I was in Chartres Valley, part of our interact club, we went around and actually put um, spray painted glue with the labels in it of all the addresses along the streets, on the corners, on the sides. That's, That's a proposal you might be able to talk to the school district about, because yeah. I know they did this as a their service project and it worked yeah. out. I know we did that in uh, Scott Township and Carter. Cool. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. All right, uh, Southbridge, Dan. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. We actually have something this meeting. Um, just let. So that you guys, there's some exciting information that's been released in cardiac arrest survival rates uh, in the last research, re batch of research that's been done. Um, so the, the initial phase of that is kind of QA what we've been doing, kind of come in line with those um, policies and the research. But it always has been a um, important factor in survival is community CPR. And in the past, community CPR used to be a three to four hour class and we had to take tests and it was very labor intensive just to go out and do that. Um, but they've now released uh, community CPR which is basically hands only CPR and takes 10-15 minutes to learn. So um, after we're done with this initial, initial phase and you know, we'll go work with the police department and the fire department for a quick response to make sure somebody gets there fast but we want to get as much of the community trained in this you know hands only compression only CPR. So. In the coming, coming months, we may be looking for some support and some, you know, efforts on the borough to try and get the community out there and get them involved in doing these hands-only CPR classes so that we can get as many people as we can trained in that, you know, doing small, you know, classes on the day they have you and things like that, or bring them, you know, after the meeting, the borough meeting, stick around and do with people, but, you know, that's in months coming, but we, you know, that's kind of on our radar to try and do that for the community. Thank you very much. Uh, Historical Society. Yes. You're on. Thank you. First of all, I just want to thank a lot of organizations in this community who have really done a fantastic job since June 20th. And on behalf of I wasn't flooded, but on behalf of everyone who was, thank you to everyone here who really helped tremendously. I'm going to talk very shortly about tomorrow night. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock at the Old Railroad Station, uh, we will be talking again about George Washington. Uh, that is tomorrow at 7 at the Railroad Station. Um, <coughs> The very last Tuesday of this month, and that's after Thanksgiving. I'm getting Thanksgiving everywhere, but where it is on the calendar. But there, the <coughs> man is going to talk about the horrendously damaging, um, whatever you want to call it, when a zinc company, in addition to all the other companies on the river, the Moine River, um, got caught in a 
problem with the over the, the whatever. There were 28 deaths due to that. I have a family, a lot of family who lived in Denora in 1948. <coughs> Uh, my one cousin, three years old, up on the narrow street of Bertha Street. I mean, it's narrow. Cement City is very really narrow. Uh, couldn't even see the track, but not the uh, light, outside light at all in the daytime. Like nighttime. No, could not. Uh, but it was a very tragic event, and that's what the program is going to be about. Um, I guess we were lucky we only got green or orange snow or whatever that was toxic in our days, but Demora had 28 deaths from problems such as. Um, I also want to say we have Christmas cards for sale. They are real honest to God Christmas cards from a very old photograph of the uh, railroad station, a library building at that time, and a beautiful, beautiful thing. There were five in a band of bundle uh, at five dollars for five, so very worthwhile. We also have a drawing of Ken Root Mix, uh, pen and ink, and that uh, is on note paper. Well, those will be for sale also. The most important I have to bring this up. We are receiving more and more and more emails every day, every week. And four weeks ago, one came in from a woman in Ohio wanting to know what the Virgil Borough knew, what they were doing for her great, I think great aunt, I'd have to dig the papers out again tomorrow, who became a nurse and in World War I went to France and, and was there until after uh, 2012, 2011, no, 19, I'm sorry. Um, I've tried to get in touch with the American Legion. I finally did get in touch with them. They were hunting for anything and everything. We've had our guru computer down in Texas trying to find anything and everything he could find out about these, this woman who did serve in France in World War I. Her name is a really unusual name. It's Jones, J-O-N-E-S. And I distinctly remember going to call on them up on Elm Street, Birchville, PA, when friends of mine wanted to run for council and I was trying to get absentee ballots from these two women, two sisters, all of them, I forget the other woman's name, which one I'd have full files tomorrow again, but we did have a female nurse in France in World War I. And I will let the, the lady, the great granddaughter, whatever, I will let her know about telling you people tonight. Thank you very much for listening. Good luck. Uh, uh, Virtual Library. Thank you. Oh, please. Um. Hello. Hello. Um, I just have some information for each of you, so I'm going to pass that down. Um, if you don't remember me, my name is Ben Hornbeck. I am the library director of Bridgeville Public Library. Um, I just want to thank you for always allowing us an opportunity to share information about the library. Um, the information you're getting is specifically about some of our programming numbers and initiatives as well as some of the financial information about the library. Um, you know, as we approach the end of the year and begin looking towards 2019, it's always good to look back at what we've accomplished this year and I just wanted to take an opportunity to share some of that with you as, as the borough is one of our most important stakeholders. Um, one initiative I wanted to draw your attention to was through the Pennsylvania Library Association. They have an initiative called PA Forward, and it's all about identifying and implementing programs that support five key literacies. Um, most people, when they think of a library, think of basic literacy, which is reading and writing, but they've also identified information literacy, 
civic and social literacy, health literacy, and financial literacy as areas of concerns for citizens these days. Um, so through that, we've worked to sort of expand and improve our programming. Uh, this year for children in the summer, we had a very successful robotics class that was, um, in fact, it sold out so quickly we offered, we were able to coordinate and offer second sessions um, for older students who were interested. Um, our children's librarian also created a kindergarten readiness class, specifically aimed at preschoolers, making them ready for kindergarten. Um, for adults this month, we had a Ghost and Legends of Western Pennsylvania session, um, as well as Soldiers and Sailors uh, World War II Footlocker presentation. So those are some, just some examples, but uh, the takeaway that I want to leave you with is that um, thanks to all of this and a lot of hard work by our assistant director, Aaron Weaver, um, Bridgeville Library is now recognized as one of 10 libraries in Allegheny County that is a gold star library in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, beyond that, uh, we obviously have a collection of materials that library that patrons can check out. Currently, our collection consists of 21,611 items. Um, so far this year at Bridgeville Library, we've circulated 62,707 items. So if you do some quick math, um, one way to look at it is that every item in our library is circulated three times this year. Um, and as you may know, Pennsylvania requires by all public libraries that 12% um, a 12% collection expense. So we're always looking at new opportunities to add new materials. Um, and this is not this is no longer limited to books. Just this year, uh, through grants and donations, we were able to purchase almost 50 different games that are now available to circulate at the library. Um, there's a variety of different role playing and card games, and then those are also used. Um, to support a adult game night that we have once a month um, in coordination with some of the other libraries throughout the county. Um, there are also, I mentioned before, but in a previous meeting we have hotspots to, to circulate, which um, gives wireless access to patrons who may not otherwise have it. We have early literacy kits and American Girl dolls. Uh, those are some of the highlights of the special items we have. Um, and we're also extremely thankful that we have very active friends of the library group who work on our behalf um, to fundraise and promote our activities. Not only do they offer us a great deal of financial support, but also programming support. They've expanded some of the craft activities we've been able to offer to patrons. Um, and they also have a very successful cookbook club, which meets every other month at the library. Um, most recently, they had a Halloween party, a family-friendly Halloween party, and Mayor Copeland was there with us, so thank you for attending. Um, it was extremely successful. There were over 300 people throughout the night that came to the library. Um, so those are just some of the highlights, recent highlights. There's a lot of information in that packet. I'd be happy to go over more of it in more detail, but I will um, leave you to peruse it. If you have questions, feel free to let any of us at the library know. Uh, and I just want to reiterate, you know, I'm the one that is talking tonight, but it takes a lot of hard work by a lot of individuals. Um, we have a great staff at the library, um, some very dedicated board members, a lot of volunteers, and most of all, we have our patrons that really support us through and through every single day. Um, and the last thing I'll just leave you with, um, in preparation for tonight, I asked some staff members, um, what, what thing sticks out for you for the library that you would want them to know, or what, what patron interaction have you had? And the one that multiple staff members have said was about a local resident. Um, he somewhat recently lost his wife, but she was a big library lover and big supporter. So at the urging of his children, he came to the library and tried to take, or did take, computer lessons so that he would be more um, capable now that he's by himself, unfortunately. So through that, he visited the library, took these computer lessons, and has really just developed a rapport with a lot of the staff members and still comes in on a regular basis. And recently he said to one of the staff members, you know, I always just thought that my wife and I would retire together and spend our days at the library. And he said, so I still come here just to think of her and because it makes me feel close to her. Um, I just share that with you because I think it really beautifully illustrates that at its core, the library is a safe, welcoming environment for all community members. Um, so if you ever want to visit, you're always welcome. And if you ever have any uh, opportunities or suggestions for things we can do to support the borough, please do let us know. We are ready and willing to help. So thank you again for your time. I really appreciate it. Like I said, if you have any questions, uh, we also have board members. And like I said, the assistant director, Aaron, is here tonight as well. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank
department. Uh, you may from the planning commission. Uh, you want to know what you say? Really? You yeah. Have anything to say. Uh, <coughs> Andrew Col Collins. I provide my written report. Does anyone have any questions that I can answer? Right. Uh, old business. New business. You know I always have something. Yeah. Uh, on December 11th, the uh, Southwest Community Chamber has asked me to advertise that they are having their annual holiday luncheon at uh, Nevillewood. Uh, it will be between 11 and 1 o'clock, and this is the second one that Mandy Pryor will be at, so she understands how big of an event this is, and she's gone <coughs> above and beyond as she always does. And just to touch base, also, uh, Fire Department, the Chamber, and the Carnegie Fire Department are selling their Mega Bash tickets, $20 uh, per chance, and remember it's $25,000 <coughs> payout on Christmas, so please... Uh, uh, Christmas or Christmas Eve? Christmas. Christmas. 25th. Okay. And uh, so please sponsor your fire department. And uh, um, just to add it on top of that, uh, just uh, based on uh, some of the different stories that I've heard, consider doing your separate donations before the end of the year, especially to the fire department and to the EMS. Uh, I've had the privilege of uh, being on the uh, South Fayette, or Bridgeville South Fayette Rotary and uh, Dennis came over and heard many, many things about, about the program. And they definitely need a lot of help as well. So if you're doing that year-end donation consideration, um, think of them as well as we'll, we'll cut to the library too. For some reason, I'll probably get yelled at if I didn't say anything. So, um, that's all I have. We also have a new business. All right, um, we're on a journey. Uh, we have a second session. There's no action. Uh, there's no action required. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. And there is a executive session regarding personal matters. Yes. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, everybody.